This is a Bible. It's a holy Bible. It's a King James Bible. And most importantly, for the purposes of this conversation, it's a non-Adventist produced Bible. And I'm going to read you some comments from this Bible in just a moment. I was actually planning to release this video at a future date, but there have been some things happening that have pushed me to move this one up in the production queue. If you don't know, we've been doing a mini-series on the Great Controversy within our series, Rebooting Adventism. And some of this has included answering many of the charges against the Seventh-day Adventist Church that we're teaching heresy. And as I said, something has happened to make me rearrange the schedule. My hand was forced early on this one to discuss something called the scapegoat. And let me show you why. And SDA folks, which we love, like we love you, but you're in a cult. And so when we talk about this whole idea of why we call it a cult, also in my book, uh, Elsie, uh, shout out to uh, EJ, um, he talks about, now listen to this, Satan is a scapegoat and ultimate sin bearer for us. So, and they use the Leviticus passage for that, right? Let's let's read what it says here. Adventists at every level of Adventism uh, teach that Satan is the scapegoat and sin bearer uh, referenced in Leviticus 16. Their official doctrinal statement of faith, Seventh-day Adventist believes, his, this is a quote from y'all, a careful examination of Leviticus 16 reveals that Azazel represents Satan, not Christ, as some have thought. This doctrine is closely tied to investigative judgment and is another unorthodox, and I would say heretical, heretical. So there you have it, the scapegoat debate, or as I like to call it now, the scaregoat debate. And I say this respectfully and without any animosity, but the scaregoat is one of the ways that people have tried to cultivate fear. You see what I did there? Cultivate fear among the people that the Adventist church is a cult. The scaregoat reasoning has been around for over 70 years, and you can read it in the book that I mentioned earlier in the series named Questions on Doctrine. By the way, I really hope you're watching these in order. Anyway, the scapegoat argument is found on page 391 of the Questions on Doctrine book, and it looks and sounds like this. Are not Seventh-day Adventists alone in teaching that the scapegoat, or Azazel, represents Satan? This question has been asked over and over again, and I want you to keep that word in mind alone. Are Adventists alone in believing this? This argument is nothing more than a straw man argument. Well, actually, it's a straw goat argument that has no validity because Adventists are not the only people or Christians that believe that the scapegoat known as Azazel represents a demon or Satan himself. And in order to prove that point, I'm going to read from this Bible that I mentioned a moment ago after I tell you a story about gospel artist Kirk Franklin. The year was 2022 and the month was October. The BET Hip Hop Awards were about to take place and gospel artist Kirk Franklin made an appearance in a promo video. For some, that was the scandal and that's a topic for another conversation. But the real scandal started when this happened. I was a dirty dish, now me and God in sync, like Big and Jay and Nas, the great escape of both. The lion and the lamb were bowed down to the goat. It was a short moment, but it was a moment that quickly went viral. And when it went viral, many people were immediately in a tizzy. If you don't know what a tizzy is, it's a moment of nervous excitement or agitation. That's because of what Kirk Franklin had just said. The lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. That's right. Kirk Franklin had just said that the lion that represents Christ, because Jesus is called the lion of the tribe of Judah, and he's also called the lamb because Jesus is the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And he said that the lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. So why was everyone so upset about what he said? Well, I'll let this article from premier.com entitled, What Did Kirk Franklin Say at the 2022 Hip Hop Awards? I'll let this article answer that question. It says, American gospel singer Kirk Franklin left his day job for a short moment to give rap a try. The 16-time Grammy winner was invited to the booth by BET for their 2022 Hip Hop Award Show. He went in with a lot of confidence, declaring that the Holy Spirit was the ghostwriter for his holy rhymes. However, thousands of Christians around the world have criticized his performance, calling it public blasphemy. The reason his 16 bars has stirred up this debate is because in one of the bars, Kirk Franklin said, the lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. In hip hop slang, GOAT stands for greatest of all time. It's an acronym often used by rappers and athletes to celebrate themselves or their peers. But despite its culture context, for Christians, 
Kirk Franklin's bars are not biblically sound. Please keep that in mind. In Christianity, Jesus is the Lion of Judah, and he is the Lamb that was slain. See more in Revelation 5, verses 5 to 6. With this knowledge, many people have found it utterly offensive that Kirk Franklin would suggest that the Lion and the Lamb will bow down to the goat. For many Christians, the goat symbolizes the devil. In the Gospel of Matthew 25, 31 to 46, Jesus tells a parable of the sheep and the goats. In this passage, the goats experience eternal judgment and the sheep enter eternal life. You see what I mean? A tizzy. So there's the story. Kirk Franklin shared on Instagram that the Holy Spirit was his ghostwriter, another term in hip hop for someone that writes your lyrics for you. In other words, he believed that his lyrics were inspired by the Holy Spirit. Now, just to be clear, Kirk Franklin's intent was not to say that Jesus was going to worship Satan. He was trying to say that Jesus is the greatest of all time. But that's not how Christians took it. So you can see that many Christians plugged in the symbol of the lion and the lamb and the goat. And they said, wait a minute, Jesus is not going to bow down to Satan. Blasphemy, blasphemy. So here's the problem. This article clearly shows that Christians believe that the goat represents Satan. And Adventists say that the goat represents Satan. And yet, when Adventists say that the goat represents Satan, all of a sudden, we're speaking blasphemy and we're cultish. I firmly believe that a door has been opened here and I'm going to walk through it. And I want you to walk through it as well. This door is the thinking door because many of us throughout Christianity are not thinking. We're not studying for ourselves. We're just reacting to things. And one of the things that we've been reacting to are the claims that the Adventist church is a cult. And for over 70 years, Seventh-day Adventists have been called cultic and cultish for many things, including our belief regarding who the scapegoat is. As I mentioned earlier in this series, we've talked about the 1957 book, Questions on Doctrine, which is a response to the questions that Christians have asked Adventists for decades to see if they should be categorized as a cult. Obviously, Adventists are not the only ones that believe that the scapegoat, or Azazel, represents Satan. Because as the article that we read mentioned, everyone was in a tizzy because of what Kirk Franklin said. And in order to make this point, I want to read from the commentaries in this non-Adventist produced Bible. It says, the meaning and significance of the word scapegoat has caused much speculation. The Hebrew is Lazazel, which is two, four, Azazel. While some scholars have viewed Azazel as a desert demon following non-biblical Jewish literature, others have taken it to mean complete destruction or rocky precipice. So there you have it, a non-Adventist produced Bible making a powerful reference regarding Azazel and letting us know that long before there was an Adventist and long before there was even a Christian, the scapegoat or Azazel was seen as a desert demon or to mean complete destruction. And I want you to keep that in mind for the next episode, complete destruction, because I believe that it represents both of those things. So with that reading in mind, we all have a decision to make. If it's cultish to believe that the scapegoat represents Satan, then that must mean that the majority of Christianity is in a cult and we can all be in a cult together because the thousands of Christians that were in an uproar and a tizzy over what Kirk Franklin rapped about believe that the scapegoat represents Satan. And the writers of this Bible acknowledge that this topic is at least up for debate. The other option is that we recognize that there is a clear bias taking place against the SDA church, perhaps for other reasons. And that what we're really talking about is not the scapegoat, but the scaregoat, which I already said is the argument regarding the SDA church that we are teaching blasphemy, that the scapegoat represents Satan. And that if the scapegoat represents Satan, then we must be teaching that Satan pays the ultimate atonement for our sins, which I can tell you emphatically, we do not believe. That question has also been asked and answered for over 70 years. What you're seeing is not new, and you can see it asked and answered in question 35 of the book, Questions on Doctrines, which says, what is the actual teaching of Seventh-day Adventists regarding the scapegoat in the sanctuary service? Do you hold that the sins of the righteous are rolled back on Satan so that in the end, he becomes your sin bearer? And we will answer that question in the next episode. So please subscribe to get updated if you really want answers on that. But for now, let's stick with this question about if Adventists are unique in their belief that the scapegoat represents Satan. And to do that, I want to show you a few more things before we close for the day. And I promise you, it's going to get even clearer. 
In order to understand what this is all about, we need to read a few verses from Leviticus chapter 16, verse 7, which says, And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. There it is, the scapegoat and the goat for the Lord, two goats that were chosen on a day named the Day of Atonement. And we will get into the details of that in the next episode. But for now, we need to find out who this goat is and solidify that Adventists are not unique in who they believe this goat is. As I already read, the word for scapegoat in the Hebrew is Azazel. And to find out what others think about this goat, let's type Azazel in Google and see what we find. If you click on the images tab, immediately you will be met with pictures of demonic figures, some of which have been used to represent Satan and other kinds of demons. You'll also see an image from the Marvel comics and in X-Men movies, the character Azazel is drawn and made to look like the popular depictions of Satan. And this is simply because it has always been widely believed that the scapegoat represents evil forces. You can see it here from this article from Britannica.com, which says, Azazel in Jewish legends, a demon or evil spirit to whom in the ancient rite of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, a scapegoat was sent bearing the sins of the Jewish people. Two male goats were chosen for the ritual, one designated by the lots for the Lord, the other for Azazel. It goes on to say that after the high priest symbolically transferred all the sins of the Jewish people to the scapegoat, the goat destined for Azazel was driven into the wilderness and cast over a precipice to its death. Azazel was the personification of uncleanness and in later rabbinic writings was sometimes described as a fallen angel. I hope you caught that. A fallen angel. For thousands of years, it was believed that Azazel represented a demon or evil spirit and that sometimes this goat was described in Jewish rabbinic writing as a fallen angel. Question, who does the Bible describe as the fallen angel? We've been covering that in this mini-series on the great controversy and it's very clear. In Isaiah 14 verse 12, it says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations. In this verse, Lucifer is identified as the original fallen angel and the one that weakens the nations. In other words, Lucifer is identified as the originator of sin. And I want you to keep that in mind for the next episode, the originator of sin and the one that is ultimately responsible for the emergence of sin. And again, you will see why this is so important in the next episode. But for now, I have one last thing to show you and it's from an article that is as Christian as you can get, found on Christianity.com. It says, in Jewish legends, Azazel is considered a demon or evil spirit. During the ancient ritual of Yom Kippur, a scapegoat was sent to bear the sins of the Jewish people. For this ritual, two male goats were chosen. One was designated for the Lord and the other for Azazel through lots, as described in Leviticus 16 verse 8. Read it for yourself on Christianity.com, not SeventhDayAdventist.com. It says that Azazel is considered a demon or evil spirit. As I said, this belief that Azazel is a demon or fallen angel has been taught and believed inside and outside of Christianity for literally thousands of years. This is why everyone was in a tizzy when Kirk Franklin said that the lion and the lamb will bow down to the goat. They thought that he was saying that Jesus was going to bow down to Satan. So as I asked earlier, if they believe that Satan is the goat, does that mean that other Christians are in a cult as well? No, it does not. It should be clear that believing that the scapegoat represents Satan is not unique to Seventh-day Adventists. It should be clear that what's really happening here has nothing to do with the scapegoat and everything to do with the scaregoat. Much like the scapegoat, the scaregoat also represents something. The scaregoat represents the attempts by many to use scare tactics regarding the scapegoat in order to cultivate fear about the Seventh-day Adventist church. It's a straw goat argument because this question has been asked and answered already for decades and yet it still persists 
and I'm pretty sure that it will continue to persist. But what you need to do is merely think for yourself, and you will see very clearly that this is not some far-fetched cultish idea to believe that Satan is represented by the scapegoat. Now you may disagree, but please at least be intellectually honest enough to do what the article from Christian.com did and what this non-Adventist Bible commentary did, which is to say that Azazel is a term mentioned in the Bible, specifically in the context of the Old Testament, but its meaning and significance have been debated among scholars. At worst, it's debatable. I believe, just like the other Christians that got in a tizzy over Kirk Franklin, that the scapegoat represents Satan. And I respect your position if you disagree. But please, let's stop all these cult accusations because they're not grounded in anything solid. There's so much more that needs to be discussed on this topic. And in the next episode, we will dig even deeper into this topic to find out why, as we answer the 70-year-old question again for the 70th time. What is the actual teaching of Seventh-day Adventists regarding the scapegoat in the sanctuary service? Do you hold that the sins of the righteous are rolled back on Satan so that in the end he becomes your sin bearer? I promise you that the answer to this question will challenge you and bring you hope for our eternal future. I hope to see you again. God bless.